Hey there, extraordinary thinkers. Lee Trevathan here again. Hey, as usual, I want to give you a, a little bit of a heads up to go down and subscribe and click the little notification bell so you get notified when I put up new videos. Our new schedule is every Sunday. Yay! We have a schedule. It's amazing. So make sure you do that right now and you'll also see the little subscribe icon on the video itself. So as you know, I like to take questions from my Facebook page. I have a large following at Facebook and I allow them to ask questions that they want put in these videos. So the question we're going to address today is a really good one and it's one of my favorite subjects. Money. Now those who follow this channel know that I am the world's leading expert on the tender art of extraordinary thinking. This is uh, something that I have studied in extreme depth for 42 years. Um, I have two honorary doctorates for lifetime achievement in this field. And I am a coach and I have been a therapist. Now I just coach and I've done radio and television and you name it. I write books. I have published over 800 articles on this subject. So money is a part of this subject. Money is a part of extraordinary thinking. The question was, what does love have to do with money? Is that a good question? I've got a great answer. Everything. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Why do I say that? And that probably sounds really weird to you. It's like, what is she talking about? Here's the deal. As you know, if you've watched these videos, I talk a lot about the difference between ordinary thinking and extraordinary thinking. It's really important. The world now predominantly is loaded to the gills with ordinary thinking which is one of the reasons why things get so tough out there. Extraordinary thinking is the extreme opposite of ordinary thinking. In ordinary thinking, most people believe that it's wrong and bad and even sacrilegious to love money. Yeah. In fact, you've probably heard this often misquoted phrase, the love of money is the root of all evil. As a preacher's daughter and preacher's granddaughter, I can tell you that's not the way it's written, but that's the way it gets put out there. And what people forget to do is look at the following behind that in the chapter of Timothy. So yeah, they forget that part. So, why love and money go together is so simple. And why in extraordinary thinking, I suggest that you love money. Sounds strange, right? I can see some of you out there right now going, she's really weird. Yeah, you'd be right about that. Money comes into the lives of people who love and invite it. Think about that. Money comes into the lives of people who love and invite it, who welcome it. So can you welcome money if you're thinking it's bad and you're not supposed to have it and it's the root of all evil and lots of hogwash as I say. But think about that. Can you have it if you're also pushing it away? You can't. So what's the difference between, let's say when you fall in love with someone and you love money? They're not too different. Here's why. What we know now about how the brain works is when you fall in love with someone, it is because you are thinking good thoughts about that person. You admire things about that person. You want to welcome and invite that person into your life. You want to have a relationship with that person. You enjoy that person. And what happens? The more that you focus on all those things that you love about that person, the deeper in love you fall. 
So when a relationship comes together, it's because the people in the relationship have decided to love each other, to welcome each other into their individual lives, and they love the feeling of it. Now when that changes, the relationship falls apart. When it changes into criticizing the other person, uh, not respecting the other person, not thinking good thoughts about the other person, in fact thinking really ugh, thoughts about the other person, the relationship goes away. Money is no different. Money is an energy. Money is an energy, in my mind, created out of love for us. To support us, to help us, to help us get through life. It's really important. So if we love money in a way where we respect it, and we're grateful for it, and we're thankful for it, and we welcome it, and we invite it into our lives through that love, the chances are extremely high that the longer that we focus on that and we hold that thought, we stay in our own vibrational lane, we're going to have it. So that was a great question. I want to thank Kim for that question on Facebook. That was a great question. What does love have to do with money? Everything. The more that you love money, the more that you respect it, the more that you are grateful and thankful for it, the more of it you get. Kind of simple, right? The other part of this is you kind of got to know who and what you are. So if you're not clear about that, if you do not realize that you are extraordinary and you can be nothing less, then you will also be more apt and willing to invite money into your life. So before I go, I'm going to tell you, hit that subscribe button. If you haven't gotten the latest book, there you go. I'll put the link down below. There are two companion books with it, and I will put the link down below for that in the description box. I will also put some freebies down there for you, and I will also put information down there about my coaching program, Thinking Into Results, that I do with Bob Proctor and Sandy Gallagher. So, know who and what you are. You are extraordinary. You can be nothing less. You can think that you're ordinary, but you just can't make it so. Doesn't seem worth the effort, does it? If you get the book, you will understand how extraordinary you truly are. So, Lee Trevathan, signing off for today. I am going to leave you at the end of this video some other videos that you can watch that will connect back with this subject matter to help you better understand who and what you really are. Bye now.